dichroic, and I'm going to show you how I case it and pull it into a thin stringer so that you can use it in latticino and, uh, well, you know, dichroic really uh, has a lot of appeal, and uh, here we go. This is just a, a small piece. You can imagine how big the original piece is. This is just a small piece of dichroic, and it's got a rainbow in it. I cut the dichroic into strips, this like this, and so it would have a raw edge on it originally. And um, I put them the, the, the strips face downwards on a tile that has been painted with kiln wash. So it goes into the kiln on the tile with the colored side down. The kiln is then brought up to 1400 degrees, and it stays up for 20 minutes. And then you simply switch it off. And you get this lovely dichroic strip with a nice rounded edge. And now the dichroic is really wedded into the glass. It took me a while to find this out because I used to buy my Moretti strips already slumped. Um, the people who sell it, Arrow Springs and France Beads, to name two, they slump their glass first. They slump the dichroic. So now I have my dichroic like this. This is a, this is a, a, a sort of a hefty piece. I'm now going to show you how to case it. Because you really have to case it. Otherwise, if you put the, the dichroic in the flame, you're going to simply burn it off. This is, how it, this is how I do it. And remember, most of the things I do, I've sort of worked out. Now, when you're putting your clear on, you've sort of got to really push it into the glass. You've got your glass below the flame. You haven't got your glass in the flame. And you have to really push the glass down, the clear glass, down onto the dichroic, because it'll sort of ride up and off if you're not careful. Make sure that you case it completely. And you want to try and get that casing just as thin as you can, actually. All right, a bit messy here. Then, now it's safely, the, the dichroic in under here is safely covered with the clear, so I can put it in the flame and sort of mush it around a bit. Get it nice and flat and ready to pull. You don't want to catch any air in there. Then you simply attach a piece of glass to the other end. Get it nice and even. And all the way, and it's just really wait for your moment. And then you pull it out. And again, you don't want to get it too thin. And you can kiss the glass with the flame just to extend the parts that got cool. They got cool because they were attached to a cool piece of clear glass. It takes a little practice. I like to get this fairly thick because I'm going to be using it another way. So I don't want to pull it out too thin. But you might have reasons for pulling it out really thin. You might want to write with it, for instance, on a bead. If I, if I make an ohm bead, if I do the symbol of ohm in dichroic on glass, then I do pull, the, I pull this much thinner. And that's how you case dichroic. Now, you know, this method of casing dichroic is just as good with Moretti as it is with spectrum. So you can use it for both Moretti and spectrum. And you just cut it off. Now this, this dichroic, put down into cane, which I'm going to show you in a minute, will greatly dilute the dichroic, because it, it's, it's already been pulled down. It's been pulled down from here to here. And now this is going to go into some cane and be pulled down yet again. And so it'll just leave the very tiniest sparkle in your cane. But that's the magic. You know, we can all make beads just by winding dichroic. But the magic is to get the dichroic sparkle so subtle that it's a mystery. <laughs>